According to the American Heart Association, getting the right amount of sleep is essential for heart health, but a new study finds that sleep regularity, which is waking up and going to sleep at the same time, may be even more important than sleep duration. Dr. Nidhi Kumar is on call to tell us more. And before we get into the results, Dr. Kumar, of this new study, how do you define good sleep? Well, four components to good sleep. The first is duration. You want to make sure you're getting enough hours, adults, that's seven hours, teenagers, 10 to 12 hours. That's right, teenagers, 10 to 12 hours. Timing of sleep is important. It's important to get that shut-eye at night because you want your sleep to be in sync with light and dark. You know, our body takes major cues from sunlight. So you wanna be getting sunlight in the morning and shut-eye at night. Sleep needs to be continuous. That allows us to move through all the stages of sleep and get to REM sleep, which is when our brain is really healing, when our memories are forming, we're learning. And then finally, sleep regularity. That means going to sleep at the same time every night and waking up at the same time. So what exactly did this study find about sleep regularity? A really interesting, Mary. 72,000 participants from the UK, age 40 to 79, none of them with cardiovascular disease. Well, they followed these people and they tracked their sleep. And what they found that people who had irregular sleep patterns had a 26% increased risk of having stroke, heart attack, even congestive heart failure. Why does sleeping and waking at the same time have such a strong effect on the heart? Now, it's a great question. Well, it really comes down to your circadian rhythm. That's your body's internal clock, your biological clock. And what that clock does is it sets the secretion of important hormones. It affects your blood pressure. It affects many metabolic processes in the bodies. And when that clock is thrown off, it creates a lot of inflammation in the body. And it also puts a major stress on the cardiovascular system. And we see that in this study. And what are some ways we can improve our sleep? Well, you know what? The first thing and the most important point I want to make is that good sleep is a learned behavior. It's a practice behavior. So if you're out there and you're saying, you know what? I'm not a good sleeper and that can change today. It's just about finding the right practices and right principles for good sleep. The first is in the evening, you want to wind down. You don't want to do anything that gets you wired. Maybe it's not the time to have the most controversial conversation with your friends and loved ones. Reduce or really, if you can, eliminate caffeine and alcohol in the afternoon. Temperature is so important. You want to sleep in a cool environment, about 65 degrees, so there's no need to turn the heat on. Uh, in the evening and then finally avoid that technology stay off the screens instead pick up a good book good advice for us dr kumar thank you as always thank you you can catch dr kumar's health reports every monday at 7:15 right here on cbs news new york